Good afternoon, everybody. Brian Newbert here from goldenblack.com, live at the State Farm Center uh, here in Champaign, Illinois, uh, doing a rap video in the weirdest light I've ever done a rap video in with a couch behind me or two couches behind me for the first time ever. The reason I'm here in the bowels of the State Farm Center is a couple of Illinois women's basketball players are using the uh, State Farm uh, Center court to get some shots up. The music wouldn't be such a problem if not for the fact that if Drake gets in the back of my YouTube videos, the snipers will come out to get me from Google. So here I am uh, back in kind of like the, I like the word bowels. I don't know what else to, to, to call it. Um, obviously a lot to talk about here uh, after you all got 10 minutes of free Purdue Illinois basketball uh, here on Martin Luther King Day. Uh, Purdue wins 96 to 88. Once again, this is your rap video uh, following that game and uh, it is brought to you by our friends at the Purdue Union Club Hotel and the 811 restaurant. Once again, if there was a Purdue Union Club Hotel in Champaign, Illinois, I would be staying there right now, even though I live two hours away and can easily drive home tonight. Um, the Purdue Union Club Hotel is that good a place. Um, we'll dive right into it here, I guess, after I've meandered for the first minute and 17 seconds of this weird video. Uh, I feel like I'm, I'm very orange. Uh, right now. That's probably because there are orange bulbs beating down on my face here. So I'm not radioactive. I'm just in weird lighting. Um, I think obviously, you know, there were a lot of positives that came out of this game uh, for Purdue. Well, well, first off, before I start talking about the positives or whatever, this is a, a huge win for Purdue. I thought this was, you know, an opportunity for Purdue to kind of recast its Big Ten season uh, after the one and two start. Um, I think this is an enormous win from an NCAA tournament resume perspective because there's a good chance that this is the highest ranked team uh, you will get a chance to beat on the road uh, all season long, uh, depending on how things play out from here. Obviously, Wisconsin will have a chance to be up there. Michigan State will have a chance to be up there. Um, I'm trying to remember who Purdue plays on the road here the rest of the way. but. Winning on the home floor of a team that'll be like probably a, a top 25 to 30 net ranking team, enormous opportunity, and they don't come around very often. Uh, and they're, they're going to come around less often this year in the Big Ten than they have before, uh, because I don't think the league is going to have as many of those those teams when all is said and done. Uh, so just an 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 enormous win for Purdue. The Big Ten race, you know, it's still obviously very early in the season. You just knocked Illinois from the ranks of the unbeaten. You just made up for one of the two games you let get away uh, earlier in the year. As I said before, it's kind of a reset opportunity for Purdue. This is kind of a new beginning uh, for Purdue in some ways. Uh, so that's what, that's kind of what I mean when I say this was an opportunity for Purdue to kind of reset things a little bit. Um, a lot of positive stuff came out of this, clearly. I mean, I think there's, as I said before, or I wrote before, whatever, uh, too, too many platforms. I can't keep them all straight. Uh, there's a certain edge, a certain toughness you have to show or you have to match when you play Illinois to beat them. And the last bunch of times Purdue's played this team, they've not really had that. You know, I don't think last season it could be reasonably expected. That was so early in the season, Purdue was so young. But one of the indicators early to me last season that Purdue was going to be okay, that they were going to go on to have a good year, was that game at Illinois because I thought Purdue really competed. Uh, there were there were moments there where you kind of wondered if they were going to keep being able to hang around. I can't remember what the final score was, but I, I just remember they didn't get rolled like an older team did uh, the year prior. Um, I thought they showed something uh, in that game. And then obviously I think today to get over that hump and to beat these guys, these guys play really hard. They're really competitive. They're really uh, a lot of things that probably aren't complimentary. There's a lot of smack being talked. There's a lot of elbows being thrown. There's a lot of stomping being done, as Purdue knows better than anyone over the years. This is a little bit of a, you know, for lack of a term, re renegade sort of outfit here. And for Purdue to match the toughness of these guys, um, I think was a really, really uh, positive step for Purdue from a competitive perspective. And I think, you know, to win the sorts of games Purdue's going to need uh, to win the rest of the way to sort of have the se sort of season they want to have, that sort of intangible is really important. The poise uh, Purdue showed uh, after Illinois made every shot they took there seemingly for the last few minutes of, of regulation and then, you know, to keep coming back, keep coming back, keep coming back. 
Uh, this is two games in a row now on the road that Purdue has absorbed really inspired runs by the home team. Uh, really, really high level shot making uh, from the home team that normally in the Big Ten is the sort of thing that can be that slippery slope where you get the crowd into it and all of a sudden things snowball on you and you end up losing the game by 10 points. Uh, Purdue showed a lot of poise, a lot of buoyancy, um, B-U-O-Y-A-N-C-Y, -Y, um, for those of you who like to hear things spelled out. Um, Purdue showed a lot of wherewithal, a lot of metal, a lot of poise, a lot of the fruits of their experience, maybe, um, in getting this done. Uh, I do think Illinois, you know, deserves the credit, you know, for coming back to this game more than Purdue just flat out screwed it up. Um, I think Andre Curbelo was a bit of a curveball for Purdue. The worst take of the day from any media covering this game was me, saying before the game, I'm not entirely sure how much Andre Curbelo would help them if he does in fact come back today after not playing for two months. Because I figured they were in a great rhythm with, with, with Trent Frazier having the ball in his hands. Curbelo is a really good player. He is Rajon Rondo uh, light. But he's an over dribbler. He can be turnover prone. And I figured, I don't know the circumstances of his absence, but I figure he didn't play a game for two months. He, he, he has to come in rusty. And a rusty Andre Curbelo might be the worst of Andre Cur Curbelo. And the worst of Andre Curbelo can cost you a game as much as the best of Andre Curbelo can win you a game. I was completely mistaken because Andre Curbelo came in and galvanized Illinois off the dribble. Did a great job. Purdue didn't have a whole lot of answers uh, on the fly for him, uh, keeping him out of the paint, keeping him from doing those dribble throughs uh, underneath the basket and then turning around and hit, hitting those little those, those those little jumpers. Give him a ton of credit uh, for bouncing back from whatever he bounced back from here uh, to play the game he played today. He drove Illinois' comeback in every way, shape, and form or form. Um, but. Purdue could have done a better job closing this game out. I thought they did a great job, you know, defensively to end the first half. Uh, I'm sure there was more they could have done from a defensive perspective to end the last few minutes in regulation. Uh, there were a couple of loose balls they weren't able to get, uh, a couple of a couple of turnovers that probably were less than ideal uh, at less than opportune moments. Um, but I do want to add this because I think this is very important uh, here in terms of the overall complexion of this game and this getting to overtime in the first place. This game went to overtime because Travion Williams didn't make a bunch of shots that Travion Williams makes like nine times out of ten. And for all of that to happen on the same night, all of those shots to happen on the same night, he has so often been produced closer. He got the looks that Purdue wants to get him. He just, for whatever reason, they didn't go in. Some of them popped out. If this is just a typical game for Travion Williams, and what was he here? Let me check my box score. He was, sorry, I know this is a really captivating video. Travion Williams was 6 of 18. Do you know how often in his career Travion Williams has gone 6 of 18? Probably never. Do you know how many more times in his basketball career Travion Williams is going to go 6 of 18? Probably never again. It's as simple as that. If Travion Williams makes three more of those shots he usually shoots 80 to 90% on, this game never gets to overtime. It was as simple as that. I don't think it was Purdue losing its poise. I don't think it was Purdue losing its composure. Purdue could have been better defensively, sure, but none of that stuff matters if Purdue just gets another six, six to eight points in situations where they would normally get those six to eight points. I think that's a very important point to make here because I'm sure people are going to look at this game and say, oh, Purdue blew another lead in regulation. That may be true, but I think there were some atypical circumstances involved in it. Um, this was Zach Eady's day. This was his breakout game. This was his um, star turn, for lack of a better term. If he hasn't had it already, I'm talking about a coming of age sort of performance here for a player who, you know, is already, you know, a dark horse here for, you know, First team All Big Ten. I think he's, you know, he's probably. It's so hard to tell with Purdue because Travion Williams and Zach Eady are both All Big Ten caliber guys, and you just don't know if one of those guys can get that first team nod when they share minutes with another guy who's their, who's their peer. But this was Zach Eady going head to head with Kofi Coburn, the dragon that Purdue just couldn't slay the last couple of years. And not only did he not back down from Kofi Coburn, he took it to Kofi Coburn and he dominated Kofi Coburn. Dominant, 
I don't think dominate is too strong a word in this case uh, because when you look at the numbers, it's certainly that's the song it sings. When you, when you watch it, when you watch how he performed against Coburn and when you watch how Coburn performed against Purdue. Now, Purdue did an unbelievable job, I think, from a team defensive perspective in terms of helping Edie, helping Travion Williams, whoever it might have been. I, I think they were all over him at the catch. They did a good job, um, you know, getting back to their bases early in the game and whatnot. Edie had a lot of help guarding Coburn. Um, Coburn probably didn't have as much help guarding Edie as Coburn as Edie had guarding Coburn. Nevertheless, I think it's very fair to say that Zach Edie dominated the head-to-head -head matchup with the Big Ten's gold standard for gigantism, power, physicality, just the most imposing physical matchup. You know, Zach Edie will probably see in his college career because if you look at guys in college basketball, I don't. I, I don't think Gonzaga has that guy this year because because Drew Timmy's not that big. Um, but when you look at college basketball, you know, Kofi Coburn and Zach Eady might be your two foremost physical 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 anomalies here from a matchups perspective. They just went head to head. Zach Eady dominated. This was, you know, playing against Kofi Coburn. I have to imagine is sort of the equivalent of the scene in Alien when. Ripley comes out in the stand-up forklift thing to go fight the mother alien, the queen. Um, that's sort of what this was. I called it a monster truck show um, matchup in my game story just now. I can't think of a better way to put it. Uh, but this was uh, this was a really high-level steel cage match sort of heavyweight deal, and Zach Eady was markedly better. And if, Mar if Zach Eady can do this against Kofi Coburn, Zach Eady can do this against anybody in the country. This was, you know, that proverbial star turn for Zach Eady. And I think he won the day, not only, you know, for Purdue, not only in the Purdue Illinois game, but I think he won the day probably in college basketball because he'll be, he could, he might be the guy tonight everybody's talking about. He's the guy that everybody should be talking about uh, tonight. I think that Sasha Stefanovic was outstanding in this game, obviously. Uh, people used to think he couldn't shoot on the road. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think that was ever fully reality, um, more than it was just normalcy, um, the normalities of Big Ten basketball. But he goes five of eight from three. Uh, Purdue made all the big threes uh, they took. You know, they didn't shoot great for the game. Uh, oh, eight of 18, that's not that bad. Um, they didn't shoot great, but they made all the big ones. You know, Purdue at the foul line, you know, shot okay, but Missed all the big ones, it seemed like, until the end of the, of the second overtime. Um, that was one of those little details that didn't even make the game story because so much happened uh, that you know both Jaden Ivey and Sasha Stavanovic had free throws that would have given Purdue that extra point that would have required Illinois to make a three instead of a two. Who knows how it would have ended up, but those were big free throws uh, that Purdue missed. But all is well because Purdue wound up winning the game. Um, I thought Jaden Ivey, uh, you have to give him a ton of credit for this game, too. Uh, he didn't play great for the majority of the game, and then he made some just unbelievable clutch plays in the overtimes. He, uh, he made a couple of Spider-Man plays, uh, driving to the basket for really, really big finishes, uh, really, really important baskets. He drew 10 fouls in this game, and he was... I never want to be read the box score guy, the guy who inspired these stupid videos in the first place, but sometimes I got to look. 13 of 15 at the foul line. One of the two, obviously, was one of those free throws that I mentioned earlier, but he draws 10 fouls against a team that was going to be really physical, play really hard, et cetera. Purdue's guards needed to be good in this game. Jaden Ivey was good, even though the final statistics show him only shooting three of 10 from the floor. I think he was one of seven at one point, closed the game strong. Eric Hunter played his best game of the season, one of the best games to me of his career, uh, in my opinion. And I think that he um, he was really one of the big winners here today, too. Uh, I'm not sure Purdue wins this game without Eric Hunter. Um, he played really well um, at both ends of the floor, I thought. Uh, gave Purdue some really big baskets, made some really big free throws uh, for Purdue. That three he made, whenever it was, I don't know. Games like this, they all run together. I'll, I'll never forget coming off the floor after the Virginia game in Louisville a few years ago, thinking, I don't even remember what just happened. How the hell am I going to write a story? 
because all this stuff happens in such a short period of time, it's really one of the most challenging things you can you can write a story about, especially when you have chicken scratch handwriting like I do, and uh, you look back on it, and it might as well be hieroglyphic hieroglyphics. Um, but just a really really wild uh, game, one of the one of the better games you're going to see. This is going to be a candidate for Big Ten Game of the Year probably if there's an award for that. Um, and I think Eric Hunter was a big part of, you know, Purdue getting through it here. Uh, as I said before, just an enormous win for Purdue. Purdue's back in the thick of the hunt. If they were ever out of it, it's so early in the season, you never really want to rule anything out. But Purdue's right back in the Big Ten hunt. They've got a centerpiece type of win for an NCAA tournament resume on the road. And uh, this was just a really, really important win for Purdue. And uh, one they had to work their tails off to get. Um, I'm exhausted right now because I got up at 6.15 in the morning to drive over here, but I'm now even more exhausted for having watched this game because this had to be physically taxing. This is one of the most physical, this was one of the most physical games uh, you're gonna see. And when you sit courtside, you realize that a little bit better than when you sit upstairs. That totally makes up for looking at the back of Matt Painter's head all day. Uh, they put us right behind the bench here at Illinois. But when you're that close, you can really tell how physical this game was. And as Matt Painter put it, so eloquently after the game. We were fouling them on every play. They were fouling us on every play. And personally, I can't believe Purdue got all the calls they got. That's not how it's supposed to work on the road. Um, but the fact that they actually fouled out Kofi Coburn blows my mind because I thought it was going to be the exact opposite because uh, that's kind of the way the road works in the Big Ten. So, all right, I've had enough of this orange glow. I'm sure you have too. Um, so I'm going to wrap this up from Purdue's 96 to 88 double overtime win over Illinois. This is Brian Newbert from goldenblack.com for the Formica, whatever substance this is. is not Formica, what am I talking about? What kind of substance is that, you think? I don't know if it's leather, faux leather maybe. I don't know. I, I, I don't want to sell Illinois short here um, and assume that's not real leather back there, but I wouldn't put real leather around these, around these fans when they're drinking. Um, anyway, uh, thank you to the Premium Club Hotel for your support, 811 Restaurant as well. Uh, I will talk to you guys again on Thursday after Purdue plays Indiana at Assembly Hall. So this used to be Assembly Hall. It's so much less confusing now that this is the State Farm Center. So thanks, everybody. Have a good night.